And now um, we're enthusiastic to introduce Sophia Amorosu. And she has, at age 22, started Nasty Gal Vintage, an eBay store, which grew rapidly to one of the largest fashion retailers in the world. She became a best-selling author and spent 22 weeks, or, or uh, nearly 20 weeks, on the New York Times bestseller list for Girl Boss, which now evolved into a media platform uh, to help women really redefine success on their own terms. So please join me in welcoming Sophia Amoruso. Um, yeah, I'm Sophia Amoruso. Um, I founded a company called Girl Boss about a year ago based on a book that I wrote called Girl Boss. Um, that was a story of how I built my last company, which was called Nasty Gal. Um, I did that for about 10 years. And when Village asked me to talk about a time I'd been underestimated, it was actually kind of hard to pinpoint um, a, a time because I feel like I've been underestimated my whole career. Um, and I, I've, I've impressed a lot of people and call me a dick, but that has left me unimpressed uh, because everyone thought like, wow, it's so cute. This girl is, you know, 25 years old and she's built a company that's worth a ton of money. And, you know, for me, that was just, I was waking up every morning and that was what I was doing. And because there were so few women doing that, I guess it was like really special and we should celebrate those stories. Uh, and it's only highlights like how few of us there are at least making the news and raising venture capital. And we all know what those statistics are. But first I wanna start with defining what estimate means. Um, an estimate is an approximate calculation of the judgment, value, number, quantity, or extent of something. So underestimating someone is a low ball appraisal of who or what they can be. And we should estimate things. We should estimate things that are quantifiable, scientific, statistical. But how do we estimate a person? And is that even fair? Do we estimate them based on where they came from? Because I grew up in Sacramento and it's pretty much Panda Express and smoking weed on the rock by the river, <laughs> like Lady Bird depicts, like it's like that. Um, is it based on their education? Because I moved out at 17, got my diploma in the mail, and then dropped out of San Francisco City College. Uh, is it based on their credit score? Because I still can't get a lease on a car and I have to buy them cash, which I'm so glad I can do, but like that's crazy. Um, <laughs> Is it based on their test scores? Because, I mean, mine were like okay, really bad in math, and like okay in English, so I guess you could have estimated that I'd write a book, but still, who knew? <laughs> is it the people they surround themselves with? Because my first boyfriend in Portland was an alcoholic fry cook named Wade, um, <laughs> and no offense to any Wades in the room, um, or any fry cooks in the room, but he threw a burrito at me once. Um, <laughs> but what is it? Like, what, like, how do you estimate a person? And our brains look for patterns, we know this, and they shove things in files based on those patterns. But with all of the research and studies in the world, I don't think anybody could have guessed, like, who or what I became. Whatever that is, I'm still becoming things. And my parents are still shocked. They're like, wow, we really can't take credit for this, but we're so glad this worked out. <laughs> we, can't, we can't help you anymore, that's really weird, like what do we do? Um, and that's gotta be a great thing to just be made redundant as a parent. Um, um, but when I did become what I am today, or at least at like the height of my press worthiness, they all applauded, like it was like so novel. Um, wow, a girl with tattoos who's a dropout and has choppy bangs and she's edgy, like, uh, as Cardi B says on her new album, <laughs> it's like a total non sequitur, um, which I highly recommend. Oh, I guess I didn't mention uh, my first job. Oh, I didn't mention my first jobs. Well, do you estimate people based on their jobs because my, did I say I was a sandwich artist? So my first job was as a sandwich artist at Subway. Uh, and then I was a stripper in Portland when I lived with Wade. Um, yeah, we have that in common too, I guess and don't get it confused. Um, and, and then, oh, the first stuff I sold online were books I stole from Barnes and Noble and sold on Amazon. <laughs> sorry, Jeff Bezos, and sorry, Barnes and Noble. But okay, as Cardi B says on new, her new album, and this will make sense now, I went from tuna, making tuna sandwiches to making the news. Um, <laughs> and I can still make a mean tuna sandwich, if any of you guys are still hungry. I know you had breakfast kind of late. Um, 
But all these accolades did to me was highlight just how different I was and how those things that they thought were so great was just who I was, table stakes to me. I don't wanna be refreshing. I wanna be formidable. <laughs> and what's there to look forward to if everyone thinks you're already the pinnacle of success at 30 years old? Like how, what a bummer. Like I don't wanna peak, like I never wanna peak. And it looked like I peaked, but like I'm still here. <laughs> and that's not to say I'm not proud of my accomplishments. Like, Yes, I sold half a million books and spent 20 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list and did like the, the utter marketing coup of getting Netflix to put the name Girl Boss into 95 million homes. There was a series called Girl Boss uh, in 195 countries. And what else? Oh, Girl Boss has been used, hashtag Girl Boss has been used 10 million times on Instagram, which is bonkers. And then I have a new company. We're just over a year in. I can't believe I'm doing it again, but we've done in revenue in Q1 what we did in all of last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying works. Um, but despite all of this very unhumble bragging and bravado, uh, there have been so many times where I underestimated myself. And underestimating ourselves is the most dangerous thing that we can do. I mean, I really believe in self-awareness, but there's a fine line between self-awareness self-deprecation, and how much damage is done when we underestimate ourselves. But finding that fine line is easier said than done. It's easy to compete and compare and feel less than. And I like to say don't compare your hustle to their highlight reel because that's what everybody does. That's what social media does. Everybody looks like they're killing it. Your peers are gonna raise money faster than you and be in tech crunch sooner than you and they're gonna have the ring and they're gonna have the house and they're gonna have the baby. But behind the scenes, like, their baby's crying, their roof is leaking, like they're crying, <laughs> like they're wondering if their relationship is gonna make it, like everybody's dealing with that, but we just don't talk about it. Um, and it looked like I was winning at Nasty Gal, like really looked like I was winning until I wasn't anymore. So you never know what's happening under the hood. And they say to fake it till you make it. And I mean, I'm faking it right now. This is again, like the longest talk I think I've ever given, which is so crazy. Um, and it doesn't make you a fraud. It just allows you to show up in a room and project the confidence that you need to put into the universe what you want. And sometimes that means overestimating ourselves to have what we don't even think we deserve. Which brings me to our mission at Girl Boss, uh, to redefine success in a world where a bunch of white guys invented Forbes magazine and put themselves on the cover. <laughs> and by making learning fun, right? Um, Let's do that, like what's the new version of that, right? Um, by making learning fun, we arm our community with knowledge. And with knowledge comes confidence. And with confidence comes bit by bit an opportunity to appropriately estimate ourselves and hopefully maybe underestimate ourselves. So we had our first board meeting last week and I was shocked for some reason when our investors, like after the meeting, said that like we had a strong story to tell for a Series A because I mean, at this point I've seen like deal after deal and thing that seems sure after thing that seems sure like fall between my you know the cracks and like out of sight like all the way to chapter 11 I don't know if you guys know but nasty gal ended in chapter 11 that's not funny but it's crazy um, so I mean I've built a huge company like I walked into the room with all the information I needed to tell a great story but I was still like surprised when they said that it was a great meeting and I shouldn't have been I should have felt like I had it in the bag but I didn't this is terrifying. Starting a business is terrifying. Starting a business when you've had like bad news and dealt with like crisis PR and laid off a bunch of people, laid off the PR team who were super loud and go to Jezebel and say crazy things and rumors of toxic culture, which like might've been true. I didn't know what I was doing at 22. When you start something without intention, like this scaling that is a fucking mess. Um, and what else? Yeah, I just feel like a total masochist, but like it's fun. and. I'm feeling, I'm, this is very masochistic. Um, and I'm, I'm learning that like the stuff that I knew I needed to do at Nasty Gal, like I couldn't really ap apply until now and it's actually happening. We've had people grumble about certain things or individuals in the company who can be not so nice and there's been conversations about that. And we've, you know, I mean we're a year in and we've like articulated to, to, to the team like how we work together and have processes and objective tools that people need to go do their jobs and run. Which I, I think we had like maybe eight years in, but by that point like it was like a Tower of Babel at Nasty Gal. Uh, 
But all of this has given me a super valuable chip on my shoulder, uh, which I hope is enough to raise a Series A. Um, but I know I'm only going to do that if I overestimate myself into the future I know I can have. Which brings me to this. One of the most important lessons I've learned in the past few years is that we have to compete with ourselves, not with other people. Compete with yourself and let others underestimate you. Let that be your fuel. But never underestimate yourself. And rewrite success on your own terms for yourself along the way, overestimating yourself into a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. So join me, the team at Girl Boss, everybody in this room in making that happen. Thanks for listening <laughs> to my talk. Yeah.